And let's move on. And Dr. Cole, next topic, I want to talk about some common baseball injuries and rehabilitation. And a gentleman from Athletic will be joining us here in a couple of seconds. But um, uh, are things starting to ramp up uh, in your orthopedic practice? Steve, they are. You know, I've certainly had projections that uh, for a variety of reasons, the fact that there's uh, very little in the way of organized sports, uh, people are uh, unfortunately uh, unemployed, do not have health insurance, they're not as active, and we're seeing just less sort of uh, you know, load or injury-related phenomenon where the business will be down for a bit. Good thing for individuals, but not good if it's associated with less activity. Um, that being said, we're starting to see pick up as people are comfortable with maintaining social distancing, wearing masks, they're still getting out there and beginning to be active. And quite quite frankly, in my office this last week, you know, I had a number of young people who are starting to throw and train and do things. So they're, they're, they're getting some signs of overuse and so forth. So, you know, we're going to, you know, the world will be a little bit different for a bit, but people when they're active are still going to get uh, injuries and, 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 and disability. So it's happening, but I, I, you know, it's not going to be at the same pace I think that we're all accustomed to. Let's bring our next guest, Eric Kroll. Eric is an occupational hand therapist at Athletico, athletico.com. They do such a wonderful job. And uh, Eric, let's talk right now, if we can, and, and relate this to the pandemic uh, going on. Um, kids are obviously trying to throw outside um, where they can, but without uh, probably proper coaching. Uh, what are some of the common injuries to the shoulder and elbow in uh, overhead athletes that uh, people should be aware of? Yeah, thanks for both having me. Um, so at Athletica, one of the, the more uh, common injuries that we see with the upper body um, are due to overuse or uh, repetitive mechanisms to the shoulder girdle or to the elbow. Um, so with, with kids coming out now and the weather getting nicer, uh, maybe we have to look at what they were doing um, the past couple weeks or the past couple months prior to this to ensure that they're, they're one, their mechanics are where they need to be, uh, and two, have they been uh, training some of their, their functional core uh, or other areas of the body um, that could prevent some of these repetitive or overuse injuries to the shoulder and the elbow? Um, so with us, uh, we'll see, uh, you know, athletes or players uh, have impingement syndrome, which will affect the tendons uh, or the muscles of the rotator cuff. Um, and depending on where they come uh, with their, their recovery process, um, will determine um, what sort of skill-specific or, or functional strengthening exercises that we'll choose to do with them. What are some of the things that you do for your athletes with uh, upper extremity uh, problems in terms of the non-surgical realm? Yeah, so for, for me personally, I like to use a lot of isometric strengthening um, as well as dynamic stabilization. Um, and I think both of those in combination with one another um, will will get the, the mechanics uh, where they need to be, um, as well as looking at the, the body from a, a, a gross perspective and addressing breakdowns or some weaknesses along the kinetic chain, maybe at the core or the hips. Um, so just because we're looking at a shoulder or an elbow problem, um, I do like to address other areas of the body that will ultimately improve uh, the mechanics uh, and, and the, the performance. Visiting with Eric Kroll from Athletico. Eric, uh, tell our listeners, um, you guys are open, aren't you? Uh, the Most of the athletic of, Athletico facilities, if not all of them, um, if people feel comfortable enough to come in. Yeah, we, we're here. We're running normal business hours uh, as usual, uh, and we also have uh, rolled out our telehealth services. If someone is unable to or uncomfortable uh, with coming into the clinic for uh uh, a customized treatment program, we can do telehealth visits through the computer or through the phone um, in a safe manner if, if the person so wishes. Uh, and that therapy is equally as customized uh, to the patient's injury uh, and, and where their goals and recovery process are at. And Dr. Cole, uh, let me ask you as it relates to uh, physical therapists and specifically here athletic, uh, you probably did surgeries on them in January, February before we were 
kind of shelter in place and um, talk about the importance of uh, continuing uh, rehab and what some of your patients have been doing and how uh, they can take advantage of Athletico being open. Steve, it's uh, important that when we've made a decision to do surgery for something that is either time sensitive or considered urgent, that we also have the ability to manage them after surgery. So uh, what we're hearing from Eric is that, you know, Athletico and these offices having availability, uh, but at the same time practicing, you know, proper social distancing, patient and staff screening, uh, that, that's, that, allows us to go full circle and provide all the things that they need. Uh, in addition to that, we have been using the telemedicine uh, a- a- aspect, and Athletico has been great at providing that for our patients where need be. So I would argue that um, you know it can be business as usual. We just have to be very thoughtful that we don't overwhelm the system because it is a bit less efficient, but you can still provide the same quality care. But at the same time, less efficient, Steve, it's the demands are a bit less anyway. So I think patients are actually having a very good experience, fortunately, uh, uh, at a time when uh, you know surgery is it has to be done and final question for eric kroll again joining us as our guest from athletico eric what are some of the things people can do to prevent injury while participating in baseball softball or any other overhead sports yeah thanks for that question i think the my best recommendation would be to a address proper mechanics first and then secondly look at um, not only areas uh, that involve the skill um, like the shoulder or the elbow, but but look at the other areas and how they're training those as well, like the core and the hip and the leg muscles. Uh, I think cross-training and giving variety to the workouts will prevent overuse injury, uh, and I think it will ultimately lead them um, on, keep them on the field for, for much longer w- with uh, less risk of overuse. Good stuff. Eric Kroll, Athletico, athletico athletico.com. And folks, they are open, so uh, take advantage of their services. They do an awesome job. And Eric, thanks so much for joining us here on Sports Medicine Weekly. Okay, thank you both. And Dr. Cole and I have to take a break. And when we come back, it's our Ask the Doctor segment. You're listening to Sports Medicine Weekly, only on 670 